Hello, everybody, and welcome to the to day three of the Key Club Bed Wars tournament. I am once again your host, Thomas. I'm here joined right now with Roman. How's it going, Roman? It's going good. Pretty excited to see how semifinals and finals turn out. Yeah, I'm very excited. Hope everyone as well. else watching is too. And soon, uh, not for this first round, unfortunately, but our other commentator, Abby, will be coming. I'm very excited for that once again. Right now, she's preparing a really excited, exciting um, initiative for for Key for Key Club over the summer, which she is super excited to share with you guys. So yeah, just looking, just gonna quickly go over the expectations for today. Today we are doing four, potentially five rounds today. We are going to do the two semifinal rounds. There's gonna be uh, two rounds of three teams of two. All the teams that won yesterday are going to be moving on today. And the winner of those two rounds will be going on to play a best of three final match. It, match. I am really excited to see what each of these teams bring to the table. Um, we saw some really impressive strategies. We also saw a wide variety of strategies yesterday. So I'm really excited. Yeah, and as is different today than it was for the past two days, the semifinals will be rounds of three teams of two instead of the 2v2s we were having before. Absolutely. And I just want to remind everyone, because I know not everybody was able to catch the first two days, this is a charity event. This event is hosted by Key Club, and all the proceeds are going to be going to the Youth Mental Health Canada organization, who is an amazing organization that helps um, youth in need through different resources just to get them back on their feet. So yeah, I'm going to see if Emma is ready to, ready to go, and then hopefully we can get... get we can get started. So in terms of, uh, I mean, personally, instead of what the fans think, because we know that the two poppies and the, who was the fan favorite yesterday again? It was the... Absolutely no stands allowed. Hands down was uh, yes, the fan the no favorite. Those are the two fan favorites, it seems, with No Stands Allowed obviously being the favorite to win. But who do you think should win? Or who do you think will win, Thomas? I'm actually not sure. I do think that a lot of the team has brought a lot to the table. I'm kind of leading to No Stands Allowed and Chew Poppies being in the final round, but I'm not actually sure. I'm curious into the chat, actually. Uh, I want to I hear all the chat's fan favorites. I know I see Kaylee, who has already popped into the, scre the stream. Kaylee is Abby's absolute rival, just absolutely causing blasphemy in the chat last time in Abby's name. So yeah, I'm seeing some sexy Baka love. That is one of the great 11 teams who made it into the final round, who will actually be playing first. I don't know if I mentioned it, but the first round is between the Chupapis, the Sussy Bakas, and the Bussy Sakas. That's going to be a very... It's going to be very interesting to see that how the teams adapt to having another team on the field and having to work around that. Yeah, it's I gonna... think it's going to bring new strategies because they can't go for a fully aggressive attack and leave their bed open to destruction by another team. Yeah, so in the chat, I'm seeing... A lot of Francesco just rooting for every single team except for the Doctors because I do believe the Doctors knocked out his team when he played yesterday and I think he is still incredibly salty about that. So you know he's indifferent. He just he has his least favorite team that's for sure. <laughs> he has the team he's rooting for not to win. Anyone else it's fine. Yeah as God forbid God forbid the Doctors win, which they are actually a very strong team. I can definitely see them making it into the finals. Um, but yeah, I think there might be some outrage in the chat. Because <laughs> I'm definitely I'm definitely seeing some Chupapi love. I'm seeing some Sussy Baka love. Yeah, so it seems like the chat's actually pretty split as to who they who they want to see win.
So I think, without further ado, we are actually ready to go. Um, as soon as Emma wants to queue us up, and then we can start our first round. I'm expecting a lot of a lot of good plays. I'm expecting hopefully less void deaths today. Hopefully. Because I but know yesterday was still some pretty interesting gameplay, even though the void was claiming quite a few kills. Yeah, despite the void actually being the MVP of this tournament overall, I hope someone else can get just as many kills. So it looks like our map today is uh, the Tree Nan. I've never actually seen this map before. It looks like it's very, very spaced out. However, it's very plain. I think we will be able to see competitors will be able to see each other quite quickly. Oh, and it does look like there was actually an error. I think someone forgot to queue their team, so we will just have to reset quickly. And yeah, sorry for the delay, guys. All right, it does look like we're on the same map. Again, a very open map. I'm excited to see how competitors will deal with the with the lack of natural cover that is given with a lot of other maps. I feel like today should all the teams should be going for a more defensive strategy to counteract having another thing to worry about on the field. And I don't think a fully aggressive strategy will necessarily pay off as it has in the past two days. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see this new dynamic where there's actually three teams on the field. But it does look like Red has fallen to the Void, the Void claiming his first live today, unfortunately. But it does seem like all the teams going for a similar strategy of all of them trying to control the middle. I'm definitely seeing a little more of a defensive side from red team versus a uh, yellow team who's actually going for all their for different resources. It is there is something to be said about different strategies, but I think it is extremely different now that there is another team. You can't fully rely on the same strategies that were working for you before because you have a whole new team to worry about destroying your bed and possibly well cross teaming isn't allowed but you can still no. get in a bit of trouble if both teams go for you at the same time yeah absolutely just looking at a glance here it looks like blue team is the bussy sakas yellow team is the sussy bakas and red team is the chew poppies oh and there's our and that is a kill for yellow. Exactly. So I'm just looking at the bed defense strategies here. Uh, blue team going with their iconic, um, like the water strategy, surrounding their bed with water and then covering up the water. I think it's a really good strategy. Yellow, or that's red. Red is going for the butterfly strategy. And I'm not sure what strategy yellow is going for. I think they just tried to cover up their bed pretty fast. It does seem like Red is going for a more aggressive play. Oh, and that is actually a destruction of Yellow's bed. Yeah, Yellow actually the first one into the middle, and then oh, with a no. void death. And that's our first elimination, even. But Yellow, Yellow is not down a player already. Not out of the game just yet. Again, that was an elimination by the two poppies. Not surprised. A super aggressive teammate. Their original round, I'm pretty sure... L record time of actually lasting two seconds but then it looks like red going for the other team base really quickly and then falling off the edge again which is a little unfortunate void taking yet another life of course red does seem to have a pretty good defense up and no one has targeted them yet so they seem to be in a much better position at least than yellow at the moment it does look like Red is going for Yellow's final kill. Having a little bit of a build battle up here. Not sure if they know what game they're playing, because this is Bed Wars, not build battle. It does... Is there a sky limit in Bed Wars, or do we feel like Yellow will just keep towering until they have blocks? I'm, I'm honestly not sure. I think we're about to find out, though. 
I mean, in this case, Red has no risk of anything, honestly. Which is why I'm pretty sure Yellow is not going for the jump just yet. Oh. oh. In? Yellow. And oh. That is an elimination. Not sure and what I'm Yellow was thinking we... quite there. Yellow was, seems to be trying to get down and was not able to place blocks in time to save them from the fall damage. That is an unfortunate elimination for the yellow team. Absolutely, and I do believe that's the Sussy Bakas, the first team eliminated in our semifinal round. Just comparing the two strategies I'm seeing here, blue seems to be traveling in packs versus um, red team who has obviously C Taco being incredibly aggressive and their other teammate just kind of building up their defense. Uh, which strategy do you think is actually better in this case, Roman? Um, in terms of in terms of the way that the three v three worked, I mean the three. Uh, sorry, two v two v two worked as of now. I think it was a good idea to get the third team off the field if you had the chance. And now I feel like they should be focusing more on defense, since they do have to focus now one on one on another team who has shown themselves to be very strong. It does seem like Red has taken this battle on top. The blue team actually coming with an interesting strategy of jump boost potions. I don't know if you saw that. In my uh, mind. I didn't. I saw them drinking the pot, but I did not know what it was. And yet another void death. Yeah, it did appear like they were they had jump boost on, which is a little bit of an interesting strategy. I don't know if I've ever used a jump pot or a jump a jump potion in the in a bed wars it didn't seem like it worked out for them but i'm curious uh what their uh what their thinking was to see how that plan would would go um upon death do you lose the pot effect yeah i in think bed wars? i believe the potion only lasts like 45 to 30 seconds that is a pretty unfortunate use to lose it that quickly especially but... it because it costs two emeralds, that is a significant... Yeah, that is quite a bit of time at the center. Absolutely. It seems yeah. that red is going on the offensive, though, which is probably I... a pretty good strategy. But yeah. both red team members seem to have fallen off and are now probably regaining resources at their base. Yes, I am curious as to how they're going to deal with the water. Because usually a water usually can stump quite some people. It does look like they have obsidian around their base, which is extremely good considering blue has not made it to the middle a whole lot this game, so I don't know how good their resources are going to be, and if they're even going to have time to destroy that obsidian. Yeah, it is... It's going to be very interesting to see how they counteract that problem. Yes. It, it does seem like Red has more control of the map and access to resources in this case, so I feel like they do have a bit more of an upper hand here. Yeah, it does look like Blue finally making it to the middle, I think for maybe the second or third time this match. Not actually going for the Emeralds, I think they're actually going to go in for the kill. I stand corrected. <laughs> they did... <laughs> Instead of going for the closer emeralds, I think they actually wanted to make their life harder on themselves by going for the furthest emerald possible. And I'm just realizing this now. Blue finally going to diamonds very late in the game. That is really interesting, but they do seem to be doing pretty well so far with defense. Yeah, the one thing that I have noticed from the Bussy Sockets is that they are an incredibly defensive team. Um, it does look like, though, Red's finally going in for an attack. Not sure. And fireballing their own base. I've, I've not seen that strategy before, but it did appear to work in this case. Well, it does... I... I'm pretty sure they had a water defense, so it would only break the clay layer. Oh, no, they don't have a water defense. It they... just happened to only break the clay layer. No, they did, but Red actually did the thing that 
I would probably do in this situation where they actually covered the water with the wool that they had on them. Ah, uh, yes, that was a very good idea, but it does seem like Blue was able to fend off the attack for right now. Yeah, so in my opinion, Blue handled that very well. The only thing that I wouldn't have done in that case is when Blue fired balled their base for the second time, they completely left the top open, which was what allowed Red to cover the water with their wall. So I would have, because it was a 2v2, there is very small chance that they would have actually lost that. So I would have just went for the attack rather than trying to blow them up and get them off the base. Especially leaving your your one weak point incredibly susceptible. And red going for it again. I don't know if... Yeah, blue team did not have enough time to repurchase the water. I don't... I don't think Red actually saw that Blue's bed was exposed from that TNT. Hopefully Blue can actually recover from that. It does seem like Blue is doing very well currently. Not really going on the offensive, but playing very well defensively. Yes, hopefully there is a there is a small a small bit of time for for Blue to actually recover their defense because their defense was really good. Right now it's taking a bit of hits. You can see they're just kind of scrambling around using whatever resources they have. And just keep on letting Red attack their base over and over and over again. Yeah, I feel like if Blue does not launch some kind of counterattack, Red will just eventually wear them down. And I don't think that's the best strategy for them to do right now. Yeah, it does look like Red going for the attack. Again, I think he needs a second player in order to assure that they can actually break the bed, especially with Blue just piling on so many blocks at this point. I will say, if I was Red, because we, you, they have such a strong control over the middle, and an, an invisibility potion only costs two emeralds, I would definitely be trying to go for that, especially like trying to attack them so many times and failing. I think the only way for them to really get past get past Blue's sight is to just invisibility potion and go in from the side. I would say that is a good idea, considering Blue keeps throwing themselves at the red team's base, so they seem to be losing materials every single time they go. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. I do think Blue team taking my advice before they say it, is hopefully going for an attack right now while Red Team is trying to back off and recover some resources. Actually going for the uh, strategy I had with the invisibility potions, they only have 30 seconds, so hopefully they're actually able to pull this, pull this off. And I think they just realized that they had obsidian around their bed, and I do not think Red Blue was prepared for that. It does seem that their plan failed as of right now, but... Oh, and Blue oh. Team is choosing to camp inside the base. Questionable strategy. I would have definitely went for the high ground there to see if there was any way uh, to escape. But yeah, it does seem like both, both raid teams are finally on the same side of the field. Hopefully they will be able to build up their defense. I I actually don't know who's going to come up come out on top right now. They do, they look really even as of right now. Yeah, both teams are playing exceptionally well at the moment. Does look like um red team is going in with the ender pearl strategy. I Oh, just destroying the bridge, I guess. I think maybe maybe trying to go for a decoy there. Trying to just make some noise, get the get the blue team to turn a blind eye. But actually not mm. going for their base. Just looks like they're trying to go for some diamonds. Maybe red does have an invisible player right now, but I have not seen them. Nope, it does nope, look like both. both players are visible, so the fireball does seem to have just been a distraction. And there's the double ender pearl play. They're going for a double team there. 
Oh, and oh. Leaving the bed completely exposed. And again, see Taco with the with the bed destruction. Oh, and that is the that match. That is the end of the game. Congratulations to the two poppies again. The fan favorites to win. Um, to win this match. No shocker to anyone. They did manage to pull it off. Uh, congratulations, or. A uh, good game to the other two uh, teams that were playing. You guys played really well. Yeah, the Sussy Bakas and the Bussy Sakas both did a really good job, in my opinion. So, yeah. With that, we are going to be setting up the next round. Um, the next round is going to be the Doctors versus No Stands Allowed versus the Coasts to Coast. I'm really excited for that round. Marcus's team, the No Stands Allowed, obviously being the favorites to win there. I'm I'm super excited. And with that, um, I just want to take a little bit of time um, to show you a video uh, that outlines. All, like the whole reason that we're doing this, obviously for Youth Mental Health Canada, kind of explain to them what they did. Actually, I actually think you guys have seen that video enough. So Roman, if you want to take a small break, uh, that's fine. But I'm, I'm going to talk to chat a little bit. You know? No problem. So yeah, so chat, we actually, we, we kind of got to talk here. Like, we've been playing this video. We've been seeing some donations. Great, we love those donations. But you know, some of you not really donating and you know obviously I would never force you to donate but I'm just saying you know I'm 62 Roman 64 I'm not saying I'm not saying anything right Actually, I'm not I'm not associated with this uh, no. threat Actually yes I've officially declared it this is officially a threat me and Roman will be coming for you I'm not associated with this threat Absolutely nope you are Roman uh, we will be coming for you. We know who you are. We may actually have to get teachers involved, like Miss Borsk. She may not look that tough, but I don't know, Roman. Have you seen her uppercut? She might. She might come for. She might come for some of you. She's our head of Key Club. Who? She. She's strong. I know Mr. Piccolo is always looking to fight somebody. I'm not a part of this threat. Why am I? No, nope, you're a part. You're a part of this threat now. Even for all of you band kids out there. Miss Slawick? Whew, you better watch out for Slawick. I've personally seen her uppercut a child. Uh, <laughs> she will be coming for you, I'm pretty sure. It's not confirmed, but I'm actually, I think that's how Lance Armstrong ended up on the moon. I Just got round how... Slander, Thomas. I think you are slandering teachers. I am, I am not. I'm just simply pointing out we got some, we got some impressive teachers out here, and you know, some of you, some of you aren't donated. We are actually seeing. I don't know how this happened. We're seeing a, an influx of dono of donations right now. Thank you guys so much. I don't know. I don't know why this is happening. I'm so happy it is, guys. Thank you so much for these donations. Um, but yeah, obviously, don't put yourself in a financial struggle. But of course, any any donation is wildly 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 accepted. You still threaten people into donating. That's not morally ethical, Thomas. You know, it wasn't going to be a threat, but, you know, then I, someone in the chat, they called me out, they aggravated me, and I think, <laughs> is, David is correcting me, is it not Lance Armstrong who went to the moon? Or is that the biker? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Lance Armstrong is the biker. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm glad both of them ended up on the moon. You can thank Slavik for that, honestly. It's Neil. Yeah, it was Neil yeah. Armstrong, but I guess <laughs> thank you, Emma. also went because of Slavik. Okay. Yeah, you gotta thank Slavik with that powerful roundhouse kick. So I do think we still have some extra time, unless Emma, are we ready to go to the next round? Or Emma may have left. So if we are not able to go to the next round, I did try and stall a bit. However, oh, sorry, <laughs> I'm being I'm being yelled at in the chat. I think we do. 
I we were we are going to take a really short inter intermission. Thank you, David, again for correcting me uh, once again, looking me like a fool, look, making me look like a fool on my own chat. But yeah, I'm gonna guys going to show you a quick video. I'm sure a lot of you have seen it already. It's kind of just what Key Club is all about. So we'll set up the next round, and I will see you guys then. It's Elementor's birthday, and it's party time. Get up to 50% off the leading WordPress website builder and start creating your future. Join us now and celebrate with our amazing global community of web creators. Sail and soon. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge on my honor. On my honor. To uphold the objects of Key Club International. Of Key Club International. To build my home, school, and community. My home, my school, my community. To serve my nation and God. To serve my nation. To serve my nation and God. And combat all forces. Combat all forces. All forces. And combat all forces which tend to undermine these institutions. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge on my honor. I pledge on my honor. I pledge on my honor. I pledge.
Hello everybody, welcome back to uh, the Minecraft uh, Key Club live stream. I am so happy to be here. We are once again joined by yours truly, me, Thomas, and Roman. We are also here uh, with Abby, who has, who has shown up. Thank you for being here, Abby. Hello everybody. I was actually watching during that whole game, so that was really interesting to see. Congratulations to Poppy. Um, and I'm very excited to do this commentating thing. It's my first time, so I hope you guys enjoy my beautiful, beautiful voice. I, yeah, I'm sure you're going to do great. 
I've actually <laughs> also, I have been asked to clarify that there, if you do not donate, there will be no teachers who will actually come and beat you up. My, my, my sincerest apologies. But yeah, I'm really excited for this next game. Uh, we looks like we have the doctors versus the no stands allowed versus the not the emus versus the coast to coasts. I'm really excited to see how that game plays out. Yeah, I I think after yesterday, which was a very interesting set of games for all the winners that are here today, I think it'll be interesting to see how all their really aggressive strategies collide in this game. Since I think every single team yesterday won because they went for an aggressive strategy. Yeah, abs absolutely. I'm really curious to see how that plays out. It looks like we have. We are queuing up. I'm seeing a lot of love in the chat for uh, for all the different teammates. Seeing a lot of love for Marcus's team. I'm seeing some love for Abby, who is not a teammate, but still deserves all the love regardless. <laughs> Um, it's, it does seem like Kaylee and Abby do have this love-hate relationship going on. I could say a relationship, but, you know, she's just there. I um, guess, yeah. <laughs> All right, and it looks like we have started. Um, I'm just trying to see who's on what team. I believe this is um, No Stands Allowed. On uh, yellow team, um, I'm assuming this is doctors. This, yeah, this is the doctors, and I think that would leave these to be coast to coast. Building yeah. to mid already. Wow. Yeah, it does seem like uh, red and blue have a a build battle going on, trying to see who can get to the middle first, while also trying to show off who can, high as possible. who can make the highest build. It does seem like red is getting there faster, but blue is bringing in two teammates, which is a much safer strategy. They are leaving their bed completely out in the open, though, so I'm not not sure if this is the uh, this is the best uh, best strategy here. I'm really worried for Red here. I don't know why. I just feel like Blue's going to come in and sweep that bed. But I, I mean, can see a really good cover. There's glass, so that won't be blasted. Exactly. I'm actually very curious is to see what Yellow has to offer, because usually Yellow is always first one in the middle. They got their iconic butterfly strategy here, but they usually they're the first one in the middle. They're playing super aggressively. I guess they're just... They're not. They're not doing that right now. I guess they've got intimidated by the other by the other two's mass gigantic builds. And blue does seem to have branched out to get more resources from the side islands, which is a really good idea. Yes, as it does look like all of them are getting diamonds, which is something we haven't been seeing with a lot, which I would have assumed we would have been seeing more. Not act not every team actually has been getting diamonds in our rounds. Yeah, I, that's really weird because whenever I play Bed Wars, I go straight to the diamond and wait for the mid until I get all those good stuff and the enchants from it. So that's pretty interesting. Oh, we can see Blue's going for the attack on Red. Let's see what happens. I would actually like to also point out um, Nathan in the chat who is saying, let's go spectators. Um, I would like to remind you, you actually got out first last time. So, not calling anyone out, but. Ooh, we got our first Elam. It does seem like there is a very interesting idea going on here with the oh and immediately destroying the safety water that blue had placed never mind absolutely it does look like blue is the most aggressive i did not actually expect this from this team i definitely thought that red and yellow were going to be way more aggressive than they are actually being right now yeah i'm surprised about yellow too but they've got 
the strategy I usually do, which is build to both of the diamonds. And I'd love to see them go to mid. Sorry, I can't believe I yeah, just I missed that. <laughs> Blue's bed was destroyed while we were talking about yellow. Uh, looks like this is destroyed by... Blue's bed. Yeah. Blue, nowhere to be found, though. Oh, Blue's, uh, Blue's over here. Don't know where his teammate is. Completely snuck in under their noses and and destroyed their bed. I don't think Blue is communicating as best as they could be right now, leaving their bed completely open. It is really interesting to see how all the teams are now being extremely careful. They're doing more careful bridges. In this case, they're going less for speed and more for stability on that front. I guess they really are, they really do want to get to those finals and not be eliminated in this round. Absolutely, yeah. It does look like blue finally, not blue, I'm great at colors. Um, yellow team uh, finally branching out, uh, expanding their horizons. Even though they haven't gone to the middle yet, finally starting to get more aggressive. And oh. uh, another void death. Oh, but yellow is going in for yep. an offensive attack, maybe. He's just out here. He's going in solo. You know, attack didn't go as planned, he's, but he's... I, I really believe in him. I think he's got it. He's got it. The, the fierceness he's showing right now, trying to take on those two, even without his teammate. True fighting style. And we, I think Blue is actually going in for a, seek, a sneaky attack there while Red was occupied. But Red has chased them off now. We appreciate the effort, Yellow, but they're going uh, again. They're going again. Ooh, Red saving oh. himself right there. Wow. It does look like they're going for the double attack. Hopefully they're more cautious of fireballs this time so that they can actually successfully get to the base as the, as the two of them instead of just, just the one. Oh, very interesting so close. strategy. Yeah, actually going for the TNT strategy, trying to clear the void altogether without being susceptible for, to fireballs. He was so close, he just missed. And yeah, it does look like yeah. yellow knocked into the void again. I think that they need to go for a little bit of a different approach if they want to be able to successfully uh, break into the bed. Blue is playing on only that one life they have. That could have been a very devastating destruction. That that could if have that been blue absolutely. member just died there. Yeah, absolutely. It does. They do have really strong PvP skills. All right. Looks like yellow planning for another attack. While I think red is actually branching out a little more, spreading out. But they, I think they realized uh, that yellow's coming out for another attack. They've come in, they've come back to prepare. I think there's a bit of a tick standstill going here because they have not left those bridges in a while. And I think maybe it's time for maybe yellow or red to move on. Um, yeah. I'd yellow. love to see yellow build to mid, but that hasn't happened yet. They just really want to get this bed. And it does look like blue, salty, also trying to go for red at the same time, which is unfortunate. And red's bed oh. is destroyed. That was an unfortunate play on yellow's part. You know, they did miss two fireballs. One of them got knocked into the void. However, hopefully that they can still stand on their feet. All teams um, still have two players alive, so it still could very well be anyone's game. Yellow still does have their bed intact, though, so they are definitely the team to beat right now. They are also the fan favorite. Yeah, the, uh, what is their names? <laughs> the no stands allowed, absolutely. Uh, one of the, one of the favorites to beat. I know that I was really excited to see the two poppies versus the no stands allowed in the, in the finals. I know that they've that in the background they've also been talking some really big game against each other. And the Void takes yet another death. Truly the MVP of this tournament. I feel that in this case, Yellow dying to the Void 
actually a sign of dominance. They let themselves get knocked off because it doesn't matter if they die. They still have their bed. Absolutely. This is just them <laughs> showing off. Oh, and Red... Ooh. With the Red, I believe, knocked himself off with the final kill. That was an unfortunate fireball. It launched Yellow right up to Red. An impressive play. Blue's still standing strong, though, with two players left. I appreciate the safety and numbers that they're doing here, although we can see a little bit of the buy going on, and it looks like Yellow is going for... Blue, maybe, or looking for red. Yeah, absolutely. Red is nowhere to be seen. I think red probably has probably retreated. Wants to stay in the game a little longer. I know that all of these, all these bedroom players are really talented. So that I can imagine getting out first may be super frustrating to them. The only problem is here that you're not trying to be the last one. You're not trying to get just the second place you have to destroy someone else's bed to win and that is a destruction of the yellow bed absolutely where we thought red was hiding he was actually going in for the sneaky kill i don't know how Ooh. yellow uh yellow missed that i guess they're both just trying to go for the kills that they completely forgot about their own bed sure and i don't think have we seen them in the middle at all this round um yellow is actually them once yeah, through yellow, through through um, red's bed though, red's bridges. Um, sorry, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Now it is really anyone's game. A yellow even being eliminated. Um, so it does look like somehow, even though first one to first bed to be broken, blue. Blue is coming. Blue is in the lead right now. Somehow, playing extremely the defensive there does seem to be paying off. Yeah. Whereas in the last in the last time, playing defensive didn't actually get the Bussy Sockers the win. It does seem like Blue Team may be may be showing off their defensive side a little better than their their previous opponents. I think from Blue's strategy we can see that being aggressive is not always the way to go especially when you get cocky and maybe think that oh like we still have a bed but should we see that yellow that's kind of what happened with yellow but i don't know i really believe in blue here right now absolutely oh and there are fireballs being launched to try and get this yellow team member out yeah it looks like only blue has been able to stay at the original base. Both red and yellow have been displaced, taking over all the other bases. Really, this is really a good use of the entire map. We do see two strategies here of uh, versus blue. He's, he, they're just kind of keeping to themselves, and red really using, really using the entire map here. I think that blue and red are teaming up a little bit on yellow since they were the ones to destroy their bed, I believe. Yeah. I don't That's actually... I'm very curious to see how everyone is going to play their respective matches. I think everyone is super scared. That was a very close call. <laughs> that was intensely close. Yeah, that was incredibly close. Again, yellow team making the incredibly yeah. risky plays. Luckily, it uh, it paid off for them in this moment. Because now they have complete control over the middle. It's but, a really, really close round since nobody has their beds. And we have two teams with only one player. It does seem like there's a bit of a standstill here. Blue doesn't seem to feel like they have to leave their base. So the other teams might have to come to them in that case. Maybe they're doing a bit more bridging out here, but... Nope, just collecting diamonds and coming back. 
Yeah, honestly, if I was blue, I think it's a little, it would be a little risky, but I think trying to go and taking out the other players, because they do have that person advantage, however, I think the issue will be getting to them. They've kind of locked themselves into a corner. I think both red and yellow are just waiting for that opportunity for them to cross the bridge and just blow them up. I thought I saw somebody invisible, but I guess I'm mistaken. It might have been Emma. I know she. There's some. Exactly. Some of our reps have been floating around, just making sure everything is. But we haven't seen red in quite a while. It only seems like we've seen blue and yellow for the past couple minutes. This is true. This is true. I think we need to see blue going into the middle to get some emeralds, though, because it looks like yellow is stocking up, and they might have a lot better materials and swords and everything when they get back to their base. So I would like to see, if I were blue right now, I would like to see them go to the middle, maybe take out yellow and get some emeralds while they're at Yeah, exactly. Wow, this round is actually going on for way longer than I thought. I thought that all of these, all of these uh, teammates would actually be super aggressive, but I guess once their beds have actually got been been destroyed, they're kind of getting cold feet. None of them really know what to do by themselves. I think these are the right plays happening here, though. I would. I definitely prefer these defensive type games instead of the aggressive ones that just, you know, end super quickly. So I appreciate that our players here are kind of playing the long game a little bit. Yeah, abs absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm super curious to see what they're happening. I think both teams are just waiting on blue to to kind of go for the final attack i think we're going to be at a standstill hopefully we don't make it till deathmatch oh and that is yellow gone yellow the fan favorite has been eliminated tfn that was that was honestly really surprising yellow i think that's probably the biggest upset of this entire tournament i don't think we'll see unless of course coast to coast come around and win the whole thing that would be a pretty big change in what we expected to see absolutely i think that now with red not at a a good resource it would be a good time for blue to attack but it's a really small window blue also be playing a 2v1 battle and not worrying about yellow coming in from the side to maybe pick up a kill so I feel like they do have an advantage that they could push very well. Absolutely. And it looks like Blue finally going off for a... for... Uh, finally going for some aggression here. I think Red is stuck a little bit here because he, they're surrounded by Blue. Not surrounded, but I feel like any attempt that Red makes to escape that little island will arrive. Yeah. I, hope, I really hope Blue has stocked up on some fireballs. If not, I'm not sure how this will go for Blue. It does currently just seem like Red will be playing a bit of a dodgeball game with those fireballs until blue runs out yeah i'm not actually i'm very curious as to see what oh red with the invisibility potion very very nice strategy and also going for the attack on the on the blue teammate in the background just trying to collect resources and then with the ender pearl all the way to blue's bed ender pearl. trying to get the sneaky kill and looks like he's going to pull it off both of them incredibly low right now. Oh my god, this is very intense. Who is gonna succeed? Oh, I think... Fireball's getting thrown at red. Running away. Both of them, I think, have a golden apple on at this point. 
Brett is a little bit stacked up against because I think that Blue's teammate is throwing some fireballs at him. I'm not sure. Yeah, once again, Blue's, yeah. Blue's other teammate nowhere to be found. Would really, I think they could finally get red here if they were to, uh, if they were able to double team him. Got an invis. Someone is invisible trying to go for red. Let's see how this turns out. Oh, this this looks like it might. And that is the end for red team. Blue team, congratulations. You will be versing the Chupabis in the finals, which will be a best of three. I'm super excited for that. This that was an amazing game. Congratulations, you guys. Absolutely. So I think right now we are... Actually, Abby, I believe you wanted to um, share a new initiative that Key Club um, has going on. I'm super excited to hear about that. Yes. So um, this summer, Key Club is very excited to continue our service project. Um, so the Eastern Canada District of Kiwanis um, Key Club, we are in District 5, so they have decided uh, to put out an initiative where it's called the Solo Summer Service. It will range from June 1st to September 1st. Everybody in the school is welcome. You don't even have to be a part of Key Club in order to participate. Um, and it will basically be a community cleanup service where you could get eight hours eight volunteer hours for every um, for every 50 pieces of litter that you pick so you would gather a group of friends depending on the COVID restriction um you would go with a group of friends or your family wherever um in order to go pick up some litter clean up the community a little bit or appreciate each appreciation to mother earth um so we would, you would go there, pick up some litter. So every 50, I just want to iterate, every 50 pieces of litter you pick is one, is um, one, one, sorry, <laughs> one um, volunteer hour, but you can only get a maximum of eight hours per person. So I think their incentive here is every, um, every key club from our division can get can participate can join um as many people as they can in their club and um yeah and to see who's you know the most clean community within the division five of key club so i would love to see some representation from redmond here you don't even have to be in key club but yeah, so we'll put out more information on that next week and we've already posted the, the link for the doc um for you guys to check it out if you're interested um it's really it's a really good great way to get some volunteer hours and you know help with the community a little bit and there's also that side of like a little bit of competitiveness because from what i'm seeing here all of you are very competitive um, that we you know can have a little bit of competition with the other divisions of key clubs so I really hope that interests you guys to sign up and, you know, join Key Club or not even join Key Club, but it's a summer initiative again from June 1st to September 1st. I'm really excited to see if you guys are interested. Yeah, thank you for that. That's yeah, cool. that, that sounds so great. I know I'm going to definitely be taking advantage of that. I'm super excited for that initiative to drop. But yeah, I think while we set up again, we're going to take a short intermission. We will be... Once we come back, we're going to be doing the finals between the Chupapis. And I can't actually remember who won. Well, I don't remember if it was the Doctors of the Coast to Coast. Won, I believe. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, but yeah, we will be we will be back in a back in a second. Don't go anywhere.
And welcome everybody to the finals of the of the FJR Key Club Bed Wars tournament. Thank you all so much for being here. I am so excited to finally be at the finals. There's been so many amazing plays leading up to this, and I can't wait to see who's going to come out on top. Yeah, this has been a very the past two games of the semifinals were very interesting. Coast to coast, pulling a huge upset, beating the fan favorites, the no stands allowed. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely did not expect that on my part. Um, so good luck to them and of... all the other teams. Yeah, good luck. I have a little bit of faith in coast to coast because I'm pretty sure they're they're a great 12 team. So go seniors from me. So, really have a lot of hope for you guys. But good luck to everyone. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, just to reiterate, it is the Chew Poppies versus the Coast to Coast. I do think that there's been a last minute skin change with the Chew Poppies. See Taco um, repping the repping the Dream skin as Yellow Team. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Very interesting. Race to the middle. Race to the middle. This is here. a beautiful map. I've, yeah, I've never actually seen this map before. This is great. It's a massive map. It's an amazing map to finish on. 
I think so too. It definitely looks like a little bit of an arena. Gives Absolutely. that vibe. Absolutely. We do see the amazing Oh, and I also just realized that the other the other team member on Yellow's team, one of them sporting Dream skin, the other one sporting the Technoblade skin, two very popular popular Minecraft YouTubers. I think they're they're getting quite cocky. No, the, this is the they are actually Dream and Technoblade. We did not know that they joined the tournament. Unbeknownst to us, we do have Dream going to our school. <laughs> this is crazy. Can't can't believe that. And we you do actually be really proud. We should we should honestly. We should all love 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 for um love for the FJR Dream student in the chat. But yeah, it does also, actually we just missed a lot of action. There was a lot of kills and eliminations going on in that little bridge. Um and now we see yellow going for blue space, I think, or stretching out their bridge a little bit. Um yeah, this is really interesting. Yeah, interesting strategy where instead of going to the middle and collecting emeralds, they're just going right for each other's bases. Kind of kind of mm -hmm. going on a on a bridge battle right now. convenient on their part because their bases are right in front of each other so that just like made that perfect little strategy going on yeah yellow team yellow team definitely having the the proximity advantage they have the height advantage it is not looking good for blue team right now and yellow team falling to their death definitely underestimating that uh that height gap right there Definitely under underestimating the power of gravity. Absolutely that. <laughs> but it does look like I, Yellow Team does have does have a good foothold right now. I agree, I agree. I don't think that Blue has a strong enough base coverage though, so I feel like they should invest in some wood or some water to get that covered up since right now they're not in a great spot with Yellow coming in for them so often. That's what I would suggest. Absolutely. Yellow also making the questionable play there. I don't know if I would have gone into their base knowing there's two people down there, knowing my teammate isn't there. I definitely would have waited for some backup and then tried to trying to double team them. No, I agree for sure. But yeah, it does again. Yellow yellow's just coming out super aggressive. It seems to be working that that working for them they have the clear advantage just killing continuously oh, killing and off blue both team died of fall damage that was wow they just knocked each other off yes i see the same thing happens over here yeah this is a this is a match unlike anything we've seen before the the team's skill levels are super matched oh it, wow blue's got the upper hand now Getting a golden apple in and going for the base. Do we think this is a good idea? What do you think, Thomas, Roman? I'm not sure. I definitely would have waited for my other teammate to help in this right now. Yeah, because yellow just respawned again. And some materials lost. That was a little bit unfortunate. Yeah, I, I would just like to bring this idea into the strategy for this game since this is a best of three finals maybe in the first round going for these crazy strategies while no one has the advantage fully isn't the worst idea yeah i agree yeah that's that's absolutely true because this is i definitely never seen this strategy where you just do a 2v2 you're battling on a bridge over a map yeah, completely ignoring all other resources here. Yeah. Oh, and Blue coming in. He's getting really close for comfort here. But Yellow takes him out once again. Too close. Too close, Blue. If only that second Blue teammate was a little faster, they may have had a better chance. Oh. 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 So they're just going for each other's base. Now let's see. Absolutely. Oh, blue getting knocked off. Do you know it's yellow? And yellow everybody close? getting knocked off here. 
How <laughs> how unfortunate there. That was two really s- and another void death. Unfortunate. We hate to see it. That was a really strong attack on both parties. Unfortunately, because of the thin, um, the thin running space they have, they're super accept- susceptible to being knocked off by the void. A good defense on both of their parts too. The teammates who just spawned in just knocked both of those guys off, so they were kind of able to save each other and fight each other a little bit. Absolutely. I'm really I'm curious as to what. Um, yeah, what yellow team is trying to do here. I think they're just trying to get the height advantage above anything. But again, going in just one by one, I don't think it's going to work in this situation. Blue team is a really strong team. I don't think that they would they would fall prey to this to this like single person attack. Yeah, for sure. I don't think either of them really can go. Oh, to, it does look like one. blue is going from behind to attack yellow. And once again, another void death. At least in this game, people are actually getting knocked into the void. They're not actually just falling into the void by their own accord. It does seem like... It's starting to look more and more like an art piece the more that they build these bridges. Absolutely. So Lily, eventually they will actually build the whole Swedish flag. I will be so yeah. excited to see that. That would be a very interesting thing to see. Maybe they're just trying to make the Key Club logo. That too. Yes. That would be great. If actually you guys want to stop playing for a second, we would love to see that. <laughs> Among any- We would love to see who can yeah, make just- the more convincing um, Swedish flag, Ikea logo, Key Club logo. That's how we will decide this best of three, a yeah. build battle. All all at the same time. It needs to be just a merge build of a one. Club yes, you will take it. But yeah, again, this goes back to what we were talking about yesterday with everybody everybody um, in rap art, you know, not being able to showcase their art this year. Yesterday we saw the beautiful heart heart sculpture from Yellow Team. This time we're just seeing a massive, a massive, um, definitely abstract piece, I will say. I think so as well. I think they need to expand their, um, their mat, like, fighting space a little bit on that bridge, because I think that's really interesting if they do that. Oh, wow, Blue saved himself by going under that bridge. Unfortunately, the and other blue could not. Yellow, oh. has, oh, yellow has the chance here to get the bed. We'll see what he does with this opportunity. Yellow! Yellow, do something. <laughs> Go. I do think that an issue with having a bridge this high is that even getting down has the chance for you to die from fall damage before you can even hit the structure protecting the bed. Yeah, absolutely. I think that was a very missed opportunity though love to see a bed get destroyed in this room yeah absolutely absolutely oh yellow finally going in for the double team here not going for it in the most efficient method because still it was a one by one by one play but yeah i do think right now oh yellow gosh. needs to invest in some better armor i'm pretty sure one of them still has leather armor which, if they're going on to that attack, well, they will not be able to survive many hits. That's true. And do we know if they've built to their diamond islands yet? I don't think so. Yeah, that go would have been a good idea, I think. Completely different strategy from the from the three v the two v two v two game. Everyone was oh. racing to diamonds. And it does seem like blue is finally building out to get some better resources here. Blue heard our advice. Thank goodness. And Blue almost going for the attack, then looks like they kind of got a little bit of cold feet here. Un- unfortunate. This is definitely, yeah, very unfortunate. This is going to give Blue, I think, a little bit of an upper hand, having that extra protection from the enchantments of the diamond that they're going to buy, or hopefully buy. Ah! Intense fight here. And they both die. Yeah. Amazing. I love yeah. that bridge. They need to expand their, their bridge space. I'm just telling yeah. you. Yeah, it doesn't seem that like they're going to get anywhere. 
I don't think so either. I feel like we're going to re reach deathmatch here. That would be so a very interesting yellow. start. Yellow is at the diamonds now, too. Oh my gosh, you're right. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, I think both of them realizing there's... I think missing the fireball launch there, both of them realizing that their strategies aren't necessarily working in this situation, so they really need to reconvene, reevaluate their situation. I think both of them both of them going for diamonds because every because it is clear how much it is helping the blue team with their protection. They're not taking any damage except for the fall damage that they're taking. Sharpness and that fall damage problem. problem. That fall damage yeah. problem could be solved. At this point, what I would do is because our each opponent is so focused on going above ground in the middle, I wonder if anyone would notice if someone just kind of snuck under, ran through the map, and just and just infiltrated the base that way. Yeah, I do think. Oh, and yellow has gone into mid actually. They have with blue really clo uncomfortably close to their bed, but luckily there is. There is a dream here to save the day. Oh, oh, oh this wow. is a huge chance for blue to destroy the bed. And that is blue team. <laughs> that is blue team destroying the bed. Sea Taco though, really, really saving themselves there. But again, that yeah, that that wooden sword was really no match at all for um, for blue team's sharpness, their protection. Yeah. This really does look like Blue might take the first round of this best of three. Yeah, at this point, if I was um, if I was blue, Yellow Team, I would be investing in Heal Pool right now. And there goes Yellow. Oh, that's the so unfortunate. He had the invisibility, the invisibility potion, but just completely showed himself by trying to drink that, trying to drink that pot. Didn't think that Blue would see them. C Taco, the only one. Uh, is that C Taco? It cool? is. Yes, it is. So C Taco is carrying the yellow team right now. Let's see if he can go far. He can go far. Absolutely. I am very confident in both of these teams. I think a, a, there will be a lot that we brought to the table. Even though it does look like yellow has this first match, this is a best of three. So it'll be really excited how um, how Yellow Team actually adapts to the strategy, to adapts and overcomes blue strategy because this is the first time they've ever faced each other. I would love to see different strategies being played out in the matches that we're going to see today. Well, if blue wins this match here, it means that Yellow has to make sure that they win every single match after that. Even one loss for yellow means the end of their run. This is true. Coast yeah. to Coast definitely has a huge advantage on their side. Yeah, at this point, it it's very hard. I doubt that um, yellow team will be able to somehow bypass blue, break their bed, and then kill both of them. Even though Sitako has very, very prominent, very powerful um, PvP skills, I I really don't see a world in which they come out on top in this one. I agree with you, Thomas, because, I mean, Blue controls the mid now, technically. They control everything and except for this really one diamond. Yeah, Blue controls mm -hmm. everywhere yeah. except for this one diamond island, which, very yeah. risky place, has a lot of holes. Yeah, I can I can also totally see Yellow wants to bridge out. He wants to try and escape, but it's incredibly risky. We don't know if Blue has a fire charge on him, and if he does, that would definitely be the end of Yellow in this round. I think Yellow now is realizing that they should have stocked up a little bit more because, I mean, I think, I don't know if, what he has, what they have in their inventory, but... Hopefully there's something in there that can help him out. Yeah, I'm But I don't think so since we're just tunneling in here. Yeah, if I was if I was a sea taco, definitely be way more sparing with my resources. They don't actually have a they don't actually have a way to buy more resources, so as soon as they're out, they're practically out of the game. And we're seeing the the PVP match. This might be the end of the game. 
pretend he lives to see another day. And he can actually get back to his base now, maybe buy some new materials. Fire charge! <gasps> the fire and that charge. Is the end of yellow. Good job, Coast to Coast. That was that was really impressive. Both strategies. None of them obviously were able to finish their Swedish flag, unfortunately. But maybe maybe there is always round two. They maybe maybe they'll actually be able to finish their finish their flag. Good game, you guys. So one point to Coast to Coast, if I'm correct. Yes, and that is right. Chupabi has to take this one home or else it's over for them. Bye bye, fifty dollar gift card. <laughs> yeah. So This is a pretty interesting upset too, considering Chupapi now that uh now that who uh who was the fan favorite before? No stands allowed. Now that no stands allowed is out, and Chupapi is the only fan favorite left. It'd be really interesting to see Coast to Coast actually win the whole thing. That'd be a really huge upset. Yeah, on honestly, it was it was honestly really shocking to me. You know, uh, Coast to Coast definitely being the underdog, um, and then just pulling out this massive win out of nowhere. For the underdog, you guys, you never know what's gonna happen. But yeah, how do we think that uh, the two poppies are going to, like, improve their strategy going forward now that they've seen how much of a threat blue is to them? I'm gonna realize that resources are definitely very important in this game, especially since it's a 2v2 situation um although they can just keep going with you know the the pvp and the bridges that didn't work well for them and i think that's a lesson learned for them and with that we are actually going to be right back uh nobody go anywhere we're going to have a quick intermission um we will i'm going to play you a quick video um outlining what ymch youth mental health canada does because they are just so amazing and I want to give them as much love as possible and when we're ready we will come back with potentially the final round of the tournament. Thank you. 
And we are back. Um, ready for potentially the final round of the tournament. I'm very sorry that you guys, I was panned on the wrong screen, so you guys were not seeing the the fun little graphic that we had set up for you, but not a big deal. Anyway, we are back. We are ready to go, already jumping in. Once again, here with me, Abby, and Roman. I'm so excited. How about you guys? I'm very excited. Unfortunately, this will be my last commentary for the day. So whoever, if, if this is the last game, hopefully not, um, congratulations. So yeah, this will be my last commentary, so I'm really excited. I'm gonna make this good for me, you guys. I want this, I want to end off amazing. Absolutely, yeah, we're so we're so thankful to have the, the co-president herself help commentate us, absolutely. Send all of the love, the love, yep. That's what I meant to say, all the love to Abby. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Okay, so we're starting now. It looks like we have, I keep on forgetting their names, the two poppies. Uh, two poppies are yellow and Coast to Coast is blue once again. Keeping it with that theme. Do we see a skin change anywhere? Um, I heard that teams disconnected to change the skin. Absolutely. Let me go, let me go check up on that. Um... It does look like they have both changed their skins. I'm I'm not recognizing their skins. I think they've just switched back to their original skins. Sorry, Did can you... I see those skins? Maybe I'll be able to identify them. It's a little hard with the armor on, but I'm not sure. I am sharing my screen to you guys, right? Yes. What about okay. that second yellow teammate? Yeah, no, it just looks like their original skins again. Again, they're going... And beating each other in the middle of the map with a bridge. This time they have no, they have no fallback. They're, if they fall off, they're going right into the void. Absolutely no safety net. This is extremely risky, and I don't know what's going to happen later on in the game if one of them doesn't have beds. Because this is, I don't know if this is a good idea for that. We already have someone falling off, but they say they actually. I oh, think they're they going, for, going emeralds. for emeralds early. But yellow team with the breakaway potentially going yellow. for their bed, will they be able to take it? Blue just went into the void to maybe save their bed. Oh, I think that and is a good idea. destroying the ladder. Interesting. That is actually a really good strategy. Yeah. Again, we see yellow, yellow here with the with yeah, the yeah. with the lead, super aggressive. Just completely ignoring blue team, staring right at them, just going for the bed. Not a care in the world. I think we'll realize soon that they don't have ladders, but I'm sure they have a way around that. Oh, they do. Blue Look team at, was prepared. They knew the ladder strategy. Thriving, so prepared. Yellow again with them making that little platform for the balls. This looks, this looks more like, I don't know exactly what the switch, the switch lamp looks like, but Ikea, you know. Yeah, again, I'm yeah, <laughs> so excited. Both teams out, both moves out and sending them back. Oh, and that's yellow just completely stopping blue trying to defend. But getting so close. Complete. That's a very close call. Oof. That see was... Taco needs to try something else here because it's not really working. I would try maybe a fire charge or TNT drops in there. I feel like that would work a little better for them. Yeah, but I don't know. They're getting so close. Both of them just this is true. wiping out blue so quickly and repeatedly. And another I mean, drop. This is... Yellow has to play aggressive here, because even one more loss and they'll be in second place. Yeah. Yeah, I would. I would wait. I think C Taco should wait for his opponent to come that way there, because it doesn't look like Blue is prepared to go on a counter attack right now. So I think their only option is to either destroy their bed defense with some TNT or go for that. Go for that double team. 
three. But yeah, we're also seeing a common theme with Sea Taco. Again, not really wasting time on armor, which is, it's still a strategy to like use your resources for other things, but I think that armor is essential, especially in this style of play where, they're, where they are going head-to-head -head combat so much. Super important to have good armor and good um, swords. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But I'm I'm very curious to see if Yellow would be able to pull this off, or they'll try and go for the different strategy again, maybe going for some late game, um, some diamonds. But looks like they're breaking in. They're doing so pretty successfully. I think they got it. Blue scared right now. They're trying to break in. So that close. was so close again. He was on. Wow. He was that literally was on amazing. top of the bed. That, that was absolutely... Really good defense on part. Yeah, that was a good strategy, trying to block themselves in. But unfortunately, um, their uh, blue team was, had some good problem-solving skills. They were able to go in from the side. Definitely seen that same funnel lane strategy when I've been playing, but not been able to do it myself because it is really, I feel like it's really hard to pull off, but once you do do it, wow, you're unstoppable. That yeah. was again really close yeah. with blue. I'm, I was glad to see them come over to yellow space for a change, but that doesn't really mean good for yellow since they need this game, need this game to win. They need to win this game. Yeah, that was actually, I think, the closest blue has even come to touching yellow's bed, which just shows how much, how much dominance yellow is displaying in this match. For sure, I really hope yellow takes advantage of the situation and breaks that bed. Oh yeah, that blue in the middle is so torn whether to defend their bed or go for that blue, that yellow bed. And the bed is destroyed. Yellow for the early bed destruction. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so excited to see how how blue will will pull this back. We saw it. We saw it in the from the last match in the semifinals. They were the first one to get their beds destroyed, and yet they still won. So I still have so much faith in blue team to pull this back. That's true. Blue has showed us a lot of resilience from not having a bed and still surviving. That was really. I thought that was a very, um, very risky move by Blue. It does seem like Blue is on the. Oh! That's a final oh. kill right there. And the other final kill, maybe, maybe nigh. And Blue lives another day. They pulled it off. Absolutely. I think that we need to. I think Yellow really needs to regroup. They need to fight, and then they need to double kill Blue in order to have a chance at winning. Because again, Blue has such strong PVP skills. This does seem like it. It's shaping up to be a yellow victory here. So it does seem like we will be going to the final round of our best of three. We will. Yeah, we're gonna have a tiebreaker. It's so exciting. Yeah, I'm. Wow, see that. knocking yellow off. Didn't even see. So, so he's wow. blue team is so stealthy. Didn't even see the yellow. Didn't even see him. So he's really close. Blue. This is so close. Blue has a lot of near death experiences right now. He's in very unsafe position. Yeah, definitely. Especially now that both teammates know where he is and successfully pulling oh, off the wow. uh, the fireball strategy. Wow. Okay. So Blue's just not wanting to die. Just really going for that golden apple and relying on their PVP skills, which I think is what they exactly what they need right now. Exactly. I'm very. I honestly, yeah. even though Blue is at a really heavy. That is so <gasps> such an unfortunate way to end that match. Uh, oh, that is heartbreaking. Oh, I have no words. Honestly. So, 
We are going to the final round of our best of three. That is that is so unfortunate. I'm sure Blue Team must be so frustrated right now. But does make for a does make make for a longer tournament. I'm super excited to see who's actually gonna take the dub here. Yeah, um, I'm really happy to have done this and have had this opportunity. I hope whoever succeeds in the next round, like you both will deserve it since I've seen you play. Both have like just amazing, amazing um, skills here. And I'm not really rooting for anyone, but this has been really fun. So yeah, good luck guys and congratulations for making it this far. Yeah, Abby, thank you so much for commentating. You did so amazing, and we will abs absolutely update you on the outcomes of today's tournament. Uh, yes, I would like to know. I'm not happy that I'm leaving, leaving at a cliffhanger, but, you know, this is going to be really exciting. So, yeah, thank you, guys. So, yeah, thank you so much for coming. Yeah, and, yeah uh, it's been great commentating with you. On top of that, I do believe we are going to take a short intermission. So we will see you guys for the very final match of this tournament. All right, we are we are back.
Welcome guys, gals, and non-binary pals to the final, to the final match of the Key Club tournament. I am so excited to see who's going to come up on top because these are two t are two contestants tied one for one right now. Uh, to see who's going to win, I'm so excited. I'm here with Roman. Unfortunately, Abby had to leave, but again, so excited. Roman, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I honestly can't wait to see the finale. After three days of matches, everyone's showing the best that they have, and it all comes down to this. Yeah, I'm so excited. I think we're ready to queue up any moment now. So excited to see how these two teams have adapted and evolved over the over the tournament so far. I'm super excited to see what new strategies they're going to bring to this final round. And yeah, we are actually in one of the original maps that we played with in our first round, Obelisk. A really hard map, in my opinion, to navigate. However, with the current strategy of just kind of bridging over and ignoring the whole map, don't know if these th there's going to be an actual issue here. And we have entered the match. Um, just trying to look for the teams here. I'm assuming that once again this is this team is going to be coast to coast and the other team is going to be the Chew Poppies. Chew Poppies obviously the favor to win. However, we have seen some really good plays on on coast to Ho coast's behalf. So I genuinely do not know who who's going to come out on top today. Coast to coast has been showing quite a bit of talent today. Absolutely. Yeah, it does seem like once again. Only Blue this time, I think, is going for this, for the middle strategy. Uh, Chew Poppies completely changing their strategy up, I think. Going for Diamonds first. I guess they've seen that just trying to bridge over the center hasn't really been working this whole time. Yeah, absolutely. I'm really, I'm really excited to see... Uh, Sorry to see their to see the new strategy. Obviously, the consistently consi we've consistently been seeing the butterfly uh, bed defense from the Chew Poppies, which has really been working out for them. But their aggression and other tactics have been completely evolved throughout this game. I think it really just shows how how essential it is for a team to like to evolve their playing style based off of what the other team is doing, just to show like that extra bit of like versatility. Oh, and that is the first kill of the round. Yeah, unfortunate. However, yellow team, massive advantage. Probably going to go straight for the kill here. Straight for the bed destruction. If yellow gets a bed destruction this early, I think it would be a huge blow to the blue team, not only in terms of actually winning the game, but also in the mental game here. Just showing that they are able to take that lead so quickly would be crucial. Yeah, absolutely. And I would like to point out, this is some oh, another void death unfortunately. But I would like to point out the fact that yellow yellow team really coming prepared with their matching skins. Um they've they've honestly they've been really on point with their game. Obviously the first match being um famous YouTubers. The second round I believe being both of them being anime references. Yeah, specifically from One Punch Man. Yeah, so that's honestly very, very on fleek for them. Very, very smart. <laughs> very good show of teamwork. Yeah, I think just because of that, they just they're automatically gonna win. They just show the their their mental connection. It does seem like yellow again being super. Was that yellow? 
Yellow's bed destroyed so early with completely under their noses, leaving them at such a, such a susceptible angle right now. That is I think that is huge actually, considering the fact that Blue lost the last game after a really long struggle, just being able to pick up that early bed destruction on yellow. Yeah, that that is crazy. That is so huge for blue. I do not know how yellow is going to recover from this. They're in such a bad position. They're even splitting up right now, which... I, and yellow, quite poetic, <laughs> with the void death once again, leaving just C Taco to fend for himself. This this may this may be the end for yellow team. But yeah, if you were Roman, if you were blue team right now, what would how would you go about go about attacking yellow right now? Because yellow has some very strong PVP skills. I mean, in terms of the actual advantage here, it is to blue with the numbers advantage over yellow and the ability to respawn still since the bed is intact. I feel like I would just go on an all-out offensive here. There's really nothing to lose for blue considering the fact that they can still respawn and if yellow tries to go for the bed, they're going to be in a lot of trouble with a really strong defense from blue. Yeah, absolutely. I've been I've been trying to come up with maybe a game plan for yellow to see how they get they could come out of this. At this point, I think just stock up on fireballs to try and protect themselves from any attacks and maybe get some invisibility potions to maybe work around. But it's not looking good. It has been pretty interesting to see how far Blue has come here, considering they have. it looks like they're about to take out the second fan favorite of the round. Oh yes, <laughs> if, Blue, if Blue has managed to put this up, the massive fan upset that will, <laughs> that, that will come from this, even though Blue, both Blue and Yellow, could, were both very deserving of the win. Yellow did seem to be the fan favorite of the of today's tournament. It does seem like Yellow is playing a bit more cautious now because they notice that this really could be their very last chance to win. Even though he's they're still being very aggressive, like really just jumping over bridges. He, it worked out in their favor, but still, I don't know if I would be taking those risks. Uh, opening myself up to any fireballs because we don't know where the other blue team member is yeah if blue team does have an invis pot on there could be a lot of trouble here for the yellow team and it does that is exactly how this game ended and with blue taking the team with the invisibility potion so that means that does mean that the winners that are the coast to coast congratulations to the coast to coast both teams played so well in this tournament i was super impressed with both of their playing styles and yeah congratulations congratulations to all players you all played so well thank you as of yours so much for being here thank you so much for supporting youth mental health canada if you haven't donated link is still in the description below and yeah thank you all so much for watching and once again, this has been a truly great event to commentate with you on, Thomas. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, this has this has been amazing. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I believe we are trying to get Coast to Coast in here for a small little interview. Um, I will see if that is that is available to happen. Uh, right, right now. Give me one second. So yeah, but in general, I'm I'm super happy with how this with how this tournament went with how the tournament went, the outcomes. Everyone was su had such good sportsmanship. Yeah, that was 
that was an extremely fun thing to watch and commentate, and I hope that everyone who played had a really good time. Yeah, it was. This was honestly really, really exciting. kept kept me on the edge of my seat the whole time. And I'm not sure. I'm not sure if we're doing the interview. I think we're having a little bit of technical difficulty. Actually, unfortunately, I don't think we're gonna. Ha we won't have time for that interview. We are. We, we are out of time for today. Thank you all so much for watching, Roman. Thank you so much to being here. Also, yeah, a little no problem. Thanks for having me. Some other shout outs that I just want to get out of the way. Uh, thank you so much to uh, Marcus and Abby, who couldn't be here right now, but were amazing co commentators with us. Thank you so much to Emma for uh, co, -com for co commentating a little bit and for, and for honestly taking the brute of organizing this. This was a massive, just massive thing to organize. And she honestly, she nailed it. Uh, thank you so much to Ms. Borsk, Ms. Fortino, uh, Mr. Defina, everyone who helped out um, an insane amount uh, with planning this. Also, thank you just so much for the people who helped us out with the practice runs. I know to name a few people, uh, Hannah, Francesco, uh, Rachel, you guys helped us so much, giving us so much great feedback. Matthew as well. And yeah, th and also thank all of you guys for watching, because this would not be possible without your guys' participation and your and your viewership. So, without further ado, congratulations to Coast to Coast. Uh, thank you all for for supporting uh, YMCH, and that is it for our school tournament.